Okay, I'm going to be going over a couple of things um, that we would normally have covered together in class, but I'm going to do it in this video so you can uh, work on this. I expect you to work on this on your own and get um, the lighting fixtures in as much as you can by Thursday's class. And then in Thursday's class, we'll talk more about how we're going to do the wiring and switching. So you'll need to have these symbols in there for Thursday's class. Um, we're going to work our way. So we're here on the class Moodle. It's this... Uh, heading lighting reflected ceiling plans. I'm going to kind of verbally go over the lecture I would have given you in person so you can kind of hear the extra narration. Um, then I'm going to show you uh, if you wanted to bring in blocks from CAD, this is kind of a step-by-step -step of how to do that. Frankly though, they're not great. So instead, I'm going to give you this file right here, which is my a CAD file with symbols and uh, wiring and all the kind of different layers in basically shapes that you're gonna to need to make a lighting plan. So watch through this stuff first before you start it. Then there's also examples here from my own work. So you can uh, take a look at this to get an idea of sort of honestly how simple the shapes are. What gets a little complicated is the wiring. So like I said, we're gonna walk through that together in Thursday's class. So if you wanna follow along, this is the lecture I'm gonna be going over here. I kind of have it open up here. Hopefully it's ready to go oh, we're on the wrong page. So let's bring that up as a slideshow. And all right, so for our lighting and reflected ceiling plans, the terminology is a little confusing. When they say reflected, um, the way they would kind of describe it old school would be as if there was a giant mirror on the floor and it was reflecting what you were seeing on the ceiling above. That's awfully complicated way of env envisioning it. We're going to think about it as if you're like looking down into the building and you're seeing the, the shape of everything that's happening on the ceiling. Again, this is a plan to tell the electricians uh, where the lighting fixtures are being installed. Um, so it's really the key thing here is the location. You do not have to worry about pretty pictures or exact literally exact sizes. You just want to give a location because the electrician needs to know where to install the electrical box that basically houses, um, you know, how your wires and everything come in and lights up that fixture and turns it on too. Um, so on smaller projects, we usually include the light fixtures, the, the wiring, like the path the wires are going and the switching. So where your light switches are and sometimes the electrical plan, like your outlets. On big commercial projects, we will break these up. And in some of my examples, you'll see that I've done that too. Another thing we're going to talk about a little bit, and this will become a bit more important when we get into Revit, is um, so a lot of you have been learning about what the cut plane is. So when we look at a plan where we cut things to see a window for um, a ceiling plan, your cut plane is starting obviously higher up. Like it's starting and ending higher up. Um, and depending on what's going on, you might have a vestibule that goes up through two stories of, say, a big lobby. So you're going to play with the range of this. You do not have to worry about this right now. This is when we kind of get talking about this in Revit and ceiling plans. But just keep that in mind. Like I said, just the way we cut a house or a floor plan, we're also cutting it for a ceiling plan, but just obviously higher up on the wall. All right. So. The next couple images are the type of lighting fixtures I want you to think about for your house. Those of you who are in the other classes, you're also going to be putting these fixtures in your SketchUp model too, like your 3D model. Um, obviously, some of these are really ornate. There is actually a SketchUp model for something like this too, so you'd be surprised for some of them. So reflected ceiling plans are drawn by us, by the interior designers. However, we coordinate and work with the electrician because they are the folks who are legally responsible. So I will draw my plan and then I will check it with the electrician. Most of the time, everything's fine. Sometimes they'll actually suggest some things that will save us money or they'll check with me like, do you really want this right here? Because the center seems farther over the wall and I'll just go, yep, that's where they're putting the table. So we'll, we'll go back and forth and have a conversation if there's any confusion. On a much larger commercial project, you will often have an electrical engineer on that job. So you're still working with them, but they are they are clearly your boss in this project because there's a lot more pieces going on um, in this whole building and with fire safety too. All right, so there's gonna be a lot of pictures to kind of explain what these, these words mean here, but just so you start to understand what these terms are when you're like looking these lights up, 
and you're looking for examples and pictures. Um, so a lot of times lighting is described by the direction the light's going to go in. So it's obviously direct, indirect, diffuse, semi-direct. So there's lots of options there. Um, the specialty, like what kind of specialty you're using the light for. So wall washers or something where you um, very precisely angle the light to hit, say, a piece of artwork on the wall or an architectural feature. If um, something is set into the ceiling, meaning it's, you know, there's a hole in your ceiling and it's recessed. So something like a recessed can or recessed fixtures. If it's uh, attached to the wall, it's called a wall sconce. Then you have specialty lighting that could be things like cabinets, like under cabinets and kitchens and bathrooms or task lighting. Some of your uh, kitchen and bathroom lights are also task. If you think about where lighting is for makeup or in a kitchen um, over a specific surface, so you can you know, see what you're cutting. All right, there's going to be multiple pictures of this. So this is just one diagram of how some of these work. So some of those terms, like what the light looks like. So for example, an indirect means it bounces up to the ceiling and the light on its own bounces down. A direct indirect means you have both light coming directly down out of the light or up and then bouncing down. Here's your recessed fixtures. Your wall washer can be recessed or stuck on the, the ceiling. And then it's, like I said, it's bouncing or directing light in a specific way. Recessed cove means they've made kind of a little shelf for this. Um, prior to LEDs, I would have to draw a lot of the details for this to show kind of the architecture of this. I still have to draw the details for that. But now with LEDs, this shelf can be really tiny. So there's a lot of really fun things you can do with LEDs now too. All right, so here's more to... Um, just again, the direction that the light's going in. Nice way, this is colored in yellow, so you can kind of see this a little better too. So just keep this in mind um, when you're thinking of like, what are the activities going on in these rooms? Also, if you're an ISD major, you're gonna have a whole lighting class in this. You're also gonna talk about how the light bulb itself, whether it's like fluorescent or incandescent or LED, impacts not only the lighting light levels, but also the color of the light, because um, the technology's come a long way, but all of these types of bulbs have a slightly different tint to them. Whiter, bluer, yellower, things like that. All right. So now we're going to talk about how you're going to use these in your spaces in your, your final project. So we're going to kind of walk our way through this with some, a couple of examples of pictures where it's going to point out oh, these different types of lighting used here in the bedroom. So here's your accent light. They're putting a light to show off this really beautiful wood on the wall. That would be an uh, example of a wall washer there. Here's some reading lights. So they're bedside lamps where this you would not actually show in your plan because this is a lamp that you're going to buy later and just plug into the wall. So the electrician doesn't care about this fixture, but you do got to make sure you're putting an outlet there for it, obviously. All right. Um, soffits. This again is that kind of like ledge that we've created. And there's some kind of lighting on the back side of this, um, either LEDs or like strip tube lighting. Um, there's more light going on in the bathroom here too, where they've got this kind of light over the, the, um, the mirror there. All right, here's another bedroom example. So an accent light would be here, putting these light fixtures here to kind of highlight the texture of the wall and also the, the fake moose head there. Your reading lights over here, these are pendant lights, meaning they're attached to the ceiling and dropping down, but they probably have like a little pull cord on that to turn that on and off. Um, also think about what you wanna have on dimmers, I kind of jumped over that in the last picture, but any of these lights here, you might have on dimmers because you could kind of, especially bedrooms and dining rooms, you want to be able to create a mood, lower the lights if you don't want all this lit up, but you want something just kind of as you're settling down for the evening, you would dim those lights. And again, there's a, there was a soffit there too. Here, let me go back. I think I skipped over that. This guy is also a, considered a soffit, this one right here. This itself might be... Um, hiding some pipes or beams in this house, but then they put some light fixtures on it just to sort of help make it more useful. Kitchens, you're going to have lots of different types of lighting in kitchens. So the general lighting would be these cans here. Um, this is probably a slightly older kitchen because to me, these cans are pretty close. Now with LEDs and also fluorescent technology, you can space these out a little bit more and still have a nice amount of light. Task lighting would be something like this where a lot of us have lights over our kitchen hoods. So there's a little light, you turn it off, you're getting more direct light on your cooking surface Surface there. Under cabinets, it's hard to tell here, but you can see in this picture, there's a little bit of glow under a lot of these kitchens. So there's another strip underneath the bottom side 
of your wall cabinets that also have a light. Some of these are motion detective. Some of these will be a switch. It looks like there's little switches on the wall here. Then finally, this island has pendant lights. These are the pendant lights over the island. So it's giving you light, but usually this is also the place where we spend a bit more money and get something more decorative to you know, tie into the aesthetic of the whole space. All right, bathrooms. Things to think about here is, um, again, I think we talked about this a little bit in class. Um, Ideally, it's nice to have lights to the left and right of your face. For those of us doing makeup, um, you're not going to have as much shadows from the lights creating like dark circles under your eyes. But you don't always have space for this or you just light a light like a light fixture that will be up above here. So this is your wall sconce right here. Um, so that's again, that's going to help you with lighting for makeup. General lighting, if you see in the mirror here, there's can lights here in this bathroom too. All right. So next one. This bathroom, um, this is also showing that there's lighting over the shower and tub. Um, again, as you get more experience in this, this will have a special, what's called ground fault, a GFI basically outlets, meaning that if these were ever to get wet, they immediately shut off and cut the, the electricity to this section of the room. So, so nobody's getting electrocuted. This is also where we talked about, you do not wanna be hanging a chandelier over here, but you will see lots of pictures and ads of people doing that. Um, but again, safety first, please. And so, you know, a lot of us have lights in our showers, but they are all going to be on those GFI outlets. Pretty much anything in your bathroom should be on a GFI outlet just in case because there's you know, so much water going on in here. All right. So there's your lighting for your shower and tub. Here's your lighting here where this is an overhead one for your vanity in your, in your makeup. This is a wall sconce here. And then decorative, you can see in this mirror over here, these nice big kind of metal sort of cage-like ones that are in this picture kind of behind us in the space. Again, giving a nice aesthetic to this room too. All right. Another thing to keep in mind that you'll probably play a little bit with uh, lighting class is um, the kind of the psychology of colors and the color therapy is kind of making a an inroad into bathrooms. And there's certain bathroom manufacturers now that a lot of some of these fixtures, you can actually cycle them through different colors. And again, it's, you know, in a nice part of kind of mental health and wellness of maybe you're going to start the day on the like red oranges light, light. Maybe if you're trying to calm down before bed and take a shower, you're going to have more bluish purple lights. So it's something just to think about a kind of a new fun technology to have in the bathrooms too. All right. So when we get into actually drawing this stuff, the kind of rule of thumbs are a lot of times the symbols are actually drawn to scale or even larger. So Fred and I use what are called three inch puck cans, meaning they're like look like a little hockey puck. Um, three inches is really hard to see on some of our uh, smaller scale plans. So sometimes I draw those actually as six inch circles, but my notation says that these are three inch puck lights. So the electrician doesn't care. They just need to know like what's going where. Um, you draw your plan at the same scale as your floor plan. We already have that set up with our project. Um, you're going to use really simple shapes. So when you see me open that CAD file, it's basically circles um, for the most part and square sometimes if it's something really obviously square. Um, you do actually turn off the furniture. For now, while you're putting the pieces on your plan, you're going to leave the furniture on just because they're going to give you reference points to like said, like a dining room table if you're centering it over that or where your bed is and where the other, you know, major kind of furniture items in your room are. Um, you can show switching on a different plan. However, for this class, we're gonna do it on our house plan. Um, we will put some dimensions in. You're, again, this is your first draft. We're not gonna make ourselves crazy. Um, in the real world, to be honest, it depends what electrician I'm working with. So if I don't know the electrician at all, I'm. I put in a lot of dimensions just in case, just to make sure everything's good to go. For a lot of our projects, we've been working with the same gentleman and he knows what he's doing. And so unless if I'm putting something centered in the room and I show it centered in the room, I don't have to also put a center line and, and show him the math of that. He gets it. But if I'm putting it somewhere else, say like five feet off the wall, I put a dimension in just so it's clear and I'm not expecting him to sit there with a ruler while he's trying to put all this stuff in for me. All right. So these are the really basic shapes we're going to use. So you're going to use a circle with these little kind of like, like arms and legs almost to them. This means that the light fixture is attached to your ceiling. So a lot of us have things like that in our bedrooms, um, maybe your dorm room too. 
wall sconce is going to be the circle with his little leg. That little leg there is what's going to be attached to the wall. So that's going to tell me visually it's a wall sconce. I'm also going to put this about an inch or two off the wall just so there's some space and I can see what's happening there. A, a recessed or a can light is just a simple circle. A pendant has this basically T shape through it. So this means that this is the kind of thing that goes, say, over an island. My switches. So an S with a D just means it's on a dimmer switch. Now, if there's only one switch, it's just, it looks like this little S dollar sign. This is where it gets a little tricky. If there's two switches, like say if I come in one side of my room and I have a switch on one side and then on the opposite side, I come in and I want to control the same lights. This is actually called a three-way switch. It has to do with the path the electricity is taking, not the amount of switches. So I will help you figure that out on each of your plans because it gets a little confusing. You might have a room big enough where you walk into it from three different locations. So you're going to have three different switches. So that's an S4. All right. This is starting to get a little bit more complicated. You're going to cover this a lot more in lighting class, but I wanted you to just see what they look like. For our electrical and power plans, we also now show our outlets. So this is a single one. This is a duplex. This is what most of us have, the, the two plugs. Some of us have four ones. So that's the duplex, the double one. Uh, the, here's the ground fault one where the electricity cuts off and won't, uh, like I said, you won't get electrocuted. So it's a ground fault circuit inter interrupter, GFCI. There's triple ones. So there's multiple ones. You have special ones for your clothes dryer, for your stove. Um, again, when you get into kitchen design, you'll you'll have all that stuff too. Uh, if you have things like a special TV, um, most of us don't. Most of us have it like digitally now, but back in the day, you'd have that too. All right. Here's a simple plan here. And again, some of these are in that example folder. So this is a bathroom. You come in this way. This switch right here controls actually these outlets because these are outlets for a colder mirror that has lights. So over here, I noted these are the outlets for that mirror that we're putting in. This D is a is a like an LED strip that was underneath. This was a floating vanity. So there was an LED strip on the bottom. So you had this kind of like nice glow if you walked in, kind of like a nightlight. So here it just says LED strip. So some of these are kind of generic because we were re like moving some things around or reusing them. Um, these ones were recessed cans, the A's. So here's all the A's. Notice I did give the math because we just kind of wanted them to follow a specific pattern where we're putting them. Uh, I think in this plan, this there, there was a little toilet nook here. This is the shower. So B, this was the exhaust fan. You do not have to do all that. You're just doing lights and switches. But I just want you to be able to see what these look like. So this switch right here. So for this household, they walk through here. I think there was a closet off of this way. They turn a switch on here and this lights up all of these. And this was a renovation. So we really weren't, uh, doing a lot of changes to the electrical work, basically. All right, this is somebody's kitchen. This one's a little bit more complicated because this family decided to spend the extra money to have um, uh, the lights beyond motion sensor. So notice I don't have my wiring here because that got too complicated. So we recognize that all of that information on one plan was you know, too confusing. So all these A's, these are little rectangles just because it turns out they were using these tiny little rectangle, like a square, so it's a square down light. So the A's, the D's are these under counter lights. The C is a wall sconce over here. F, this guy was a big, um, really fancy like chandelier from Hubbardton Forge. They're beautiful if you get a chance to look them up. This G over here was special outlets because they had antique clocks. Um, and these little guys, the bees are pendant lights. So again, you can see the different symbols I've used, but you know, they're all kind of the same size. They're pretty generic. The most important information over here is the ordering. Um, you do not have to do that either yet. You're going to keep it generic. Um, you're going to do this when you get to Anthony's class, you're going to fill kind of fill in more of this, this buying info. So this is that same kitchen, but this is the lighting plan. So notice we kept the symbols are still here. The letters are still here, but this is where we're kind of explaining the switching and the zoning. So let me go back. So this plan has all the math, like all the dimensions of where to exactly put these. Now this plan has the switching. Your houses, you're still going to combine the two. Switching also, you kind of draw it on these curved arches. So this guy, right, this is a good example. Let's see this one. This is a three-way, meaning uh, they come in. This is a big house. They came in this way. 
you could turn on this switch right here and it would like light up this whole row here or if it came through the house this way you turned it on here so that's why that's a three-way switch if you see it's the s3 it's a d because they're also on dimmers um where for example this switch right here down at the bottom just turns on the f right here so that one's there all right so these are complicated this is someone's basement this gets a little bit more complicated Remember, what I want you to do is to first just put all these shapes in, have a sense of how you're lighting these spaces. I'm going to take a look at it Thursday. You are welcome to start the wiring if you want, but we're going to look at the spaces together first. And so for those of you who have, let me go back to this, like multiple places, you should have your switches. We'll talk through that. Okay. So for homework, you must get the, the shapes in for all the lights like the general locations, and then you're going to get the wire. So let me just turn this part off now. So if you go back to Moodle, if you open up this RCP sample engine right there, I'm going to just download it quick. So let me pause that. All right, here's that plan right here. Kind of zoom in a second as it's coming through here. All right, let's get this. All right, zooming in it. All right, so this is taken from an actual house that I've worked on. And honestly, I copy and paste this over and over again because like I said, I kind of have my own draft going here. So I've put your own for this class over to the right here. Here's the kind of the, those sample shapes we had on the, the lecture. Here's a layer for the wiring. So let me see if I click on it. Let's see, should we should see up here? Here's the e-electric wire. Now I was helping, I think, Anna or somebody else in class and the current ver version of CAD if you bring a lighting fixture in this uh, lighting layer, here, let me show you here. This E, well, let's see, we gotta go back up here. This E light ceiling layer comes in a really dark purple. It's really hard to see on the screen. So if you want to use mine instead, this is kind of the original layer colors. Um, both are correct, but frankly, I think these are a lot easier to see, this yellow on the black. The switches, they have their own special layer, this green up here. So if I go back to home, their e-electric switch, that's their layer. Um, so we have lighting has its own layer, switches have its own la layer, and wiring has its own layer. So you can kind of copy and paste from these to put around your house. Um, again, they're pretty standard here. Like I said, this is your can recess. This is one of those wall washer ones. These guys are kind of tiny. So the reason they're tiny is because they were to fit into this chart. So you really want to be using these bigger sizes over here. Um, to do under count, mount counter lights, you're just going to draw yourself a rectangle. So however kind of visually what looks the right kind of thickness for you. And then you just make sure you put it on your this lighting layer here. So, if, you know, you, you can kind of determine how thick you want. I know in that one plan I had, they're drawn really thick, but they really are just a little LED strip. The idea for this, again, is this is a map you're giving to the electrician. So I would suggest you take all of this, control C, copy. Here's my view for my lighting plan and just paste it in here and then start kind of popping these symbols around your house. There's the paste, control V. So we'll talk about this more Thursday in class, but your final plan will have, hold on, where they go? Sorry, it's a little laggy here. There we go. Okay, your final plan will have all the symbols in here and you'll also basically use this chart. So you're going to edit this chart a bit if you change or add other kinds of fixtures, but you're going to use this as a starting point to ha have this chart. So because if you look at some of the examples I have, let me see if it's back here again. Um, again, with your lighting plan, you're often going to have the chart on the same plan because the electrician is just going to take that one sheet of paper with them into the job. Uh, let me see if I can find it in here. Do, do, do. It's down at the bottom. Let's see way down at the bottom. Keep going. Sorry. All right. Right here. Here's a good one. So this is, you know, the sheet that we print out and, you know, the electrician can walk right into the house. They have their map where everything goes. And then they have their key to like, what's A light, what's B light, what's C light. So you're going to do a similar kind of thing, but really you're just going to use this little chart here. Okay. So we're going to keep it real simple for this first one. It's just for you to start thinking about this. Those of you who are ISD majors, you're going to rework this plan um, when you have lighting class. All right. So again, reminder, homework is to fill in the symbols, do the wiring. If you're starting to feel confident about that, I will help you with the switches and where that goes. And remember, I'm going to be really lenient on this. This is more just to get you 
starting to think about this. For those of you who are doing the 3D model to start thinking about where you're placing them, what kind of lights you're picking out too. So kind of have that going in the background and we will work through and review this stuff on Thursday. All right. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be there this afternoon, but like I said, you should be able to work through this just fine and we'll um, go over it together on Thursday.